this was the thing that they handed me. So I was always the assistant band director. I was doing marching band. I was doing concert band. I was doing music theory and teaching any off class that needed to be taught. And there was one jazz band class. And the head director many years ago said, would you just take this off my plate? When I think about how music and education intersect for me, I was so excited about that moment because that is my favorite memory of high school, is playing bass in a big band. And I thought, I want to give those kids the same great experience that I had. started with the what. Everything that I did was about the what and, okay, we've got to get these things accomplished and this is the curriculum. It's like, oh, we've got to start with the top music. We've got to start with the greatest hits, the Duke Ellington, the Count Basie, and the students weren't ready for that. And I realized so early on, you have to start where the students are. If they are a glorified pet band when you are given this program, you probably have to play the rock music and whatever music speaks to them and then back up the decades to get them into music that they will start to appreciate things that they don't already love. So essentially, Ellington in New York City, it's known as the Super Bowl of Jazz Festivals in the United States. They take 15 bands from the US and Canada. All, all those bands have to do an audition process where you record three Duke Ellington songs. They are the exact arrangements that Duke Ellington wrote for his virtuosic players in the 1900s. And so there's no arrangements. There are no watered down parts. They are exactly for those incredible top at the top of the top musicians that were touring. That was basically the popular music of the day. In order to make a festival like that, you have to lay the groundwork for students to be able to fall in love with that music because it's different than anything that they are exposed to. So you have to find a way of making the music really compelling and getting the kids really into it because the only way to emulate that music is to be listening over and over and over to get all the nuance and to get all the amazing things that are happening. This music, I mean, it came out of slavery and it came out of such oppression and yet, it was hopeful. Like there was this element that transcended it to say, even though these are our circumstances, we still have hope that things can be better. And so that's what they sort of lived out in this music. It can be hard to sort of help students make that connection, but every student has hard days, and every student has these moments that feel a little bit hopeless. And so you want to show them that everyone experiences that, but what's the next step for you? And how can that change your life if you have a perspective that says, what I am seeing in this moment, it can be better and it can be hopeful. The story that I'll tell you with the students that really embodied this, it was 2020, came back to school after the pandemic had shut us down, that, those last nine weeks of school, and we were in hybrid. So you've got all these seniors who have just been on this path to being these incredible musicians. And their senior year, they realized that half the alphabet will be in school Monday and Tuesday. Half the alphabet will be in school Thursday, Friday. So our bands will never be together. But we got some permission to meet before school, spread out if we rented the auditorium. And I asked the students if they wanted to do that. And they said, absolutely. So the top band started meeting in the auditorium once a week. And the lead trumpet player, at the end of this rehearsal, he said, guys, I really want to talk to you. And he got really emotional and he said, I, I w I'm really upset that this is what our senior year looks like. What are we going to do? Are we going to focus on what we've lost? Or are we going to focus on what we have left? That means that we'll have to work so much harder and it'll be outside of school and we don't have our school day anymore to do this. The kids were all in. In January, I went in for a routine scan, and it said I had three masses. 
So I was in quite a state, but I came here and kind of knew that I needed to put that aside and just do what I could for the students. And really, being here and feeling some sense of normalcy and just interacting with really funny and hilarious high school kids was a great distraction for me. But I did get a diagnosis the very next week after a biopsy of cancer. I, I just knew I had sort of a mountain ahead of me that I had to climb health-wise. I had to tell the kids at some point because I was missing school. I had a lot of appointments. I started off by telling them, all right, I have something serious to tell you. I said, the number one thing I need you to hear is that I'm going to be okay. And so I started there and they got very, very quiet because they're like, what is going on? They've never heard me say anything like this. So the things I wanted them to know were, number one, I was going to be okay. Number two, I had been diagnosed with cancer. Number three, I'm going to be okay. I didn't want them to ever talk about me having cancer without also putting that, like that would had to be a package deal for any conversation that they were going to have outside of class or with me about this. And the other thing I wanted to tell them was that you were going to hit these moments in your life that are so difficult. At the same time, life is not all good or all bad. And so even in what feels like the darkest days of your life, you can still find these moments, these pockets of joy and love that come through even when it's really, really, really difficult. I was trying to live that out even though it was difficult, but I wanted them to see me try to do that so that maybe when they hit a difficult part of their life, they would know that there was light and that there was still joy and it wasn't all bad. And there's this moment where we found out we made the festival and we're all jumping up and down and hugging each other. And I got so emotional because in that moment, I knew that I had cancer, but I didn't know the plan. And I just, in my brain, I couldn't figure out if that plan would end up not allowing me to take these kids to New York. But I knew in that moment that I would do whatever it took to get them there. And so after some careful consideration with my doctors, they decided that it was um, a really low stage and that I could postpone my treatments until after I took the students to New York. And I don't regret it at all. Alright guys, I've grabbed everything, don't leave anything behind because then they... For years and years and years I just thought, I can't imagine me ever walking onto that stage. And when we did, I think my, my greatest fear would be that we would be so in awe of the space that we wouldn't be able to play our best. But getting ready for Jazz at Lincoln Center, I booked every stage that I could in Indiana. We played at the beautiful Palladium Center for the Performing Arts in Carmel, Indiana. We played at the Jazz Kitchen, one of the greatest clubs here. The students became so comfortable performing that when they walked onto the stage at Jazz at Lincoln Center, we just had a blast. Hello, my name is Stephanie Robinson, and this is Noblesville High School Jazz Band. We are from Noblesville, Indiana. We're going to start today with Tootie for Cootie by Duke Ellington and Jimmy Hamilton, featuring Leo Metz on the piano and Levi Rosick on trumpet. so emotional for me, but you could just see the students just smiling and high-fiving each other. They had the best time and they just did so well that we came off stage and we were just so happy. Yeah. 
I will say that if I was an English teacher, I would figure out how to cultivate a culture for the kids, no matter the medium. My medium just happens to be jazz here, but I want these kids to be great humans when they leave. They could be the best musician on the planet, and if they aren't a better human and they don't have the skill of empathy and getting along with each other and conflict resolution and any of those skills, if they leave without those skills, then I failed them as a teacher. Those are the things that are way more important. The music is secondary to helping the students become better and more of themselves before they leave this place.